Okay, this is part two of um, Pacific War help tutorials in uh, certain mechanics and parts of the game. And this one is all about the battle cycle because I know there are people with finishing engagement scenarios, kind of going through some of those little details in, in uh, how to play certain parts of the game, combat and airstrikes, etc. Then they jump into the battle scenarios, and this is where this becomes really, really important. And, and I, I think understanding this and how it's structured is really, really crucial to doing well at the game. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing battle scenarios, campaign scenarios, or strategic scenarios. You really need to understand the order. Again, this is something I did not appreciate when I first played, but now when I when I see the order, you it, you can really take advantage of it, um, and it, it's it's going to help you enjoy the game more because you can see some of the strategy behind um, how this fits together. Okay, it's not straightforward and and um, symmetrical. Let's put it that way. So the first thing you do is the lighting phase. I've seen a lot of confusion, well, maybe not a lot of confusion, but I think there's some confusion about how the lighting phase works. <clears throat> Let's just grab uh, any old counter. I mean, this, this isn't what I, um, I just put that in. There's a, there's a lighting counter, which I didn't grab, but. Okay, so you're in the lighting phase. What happens? Well, if I'm the operational player, I have a choice. On the very first lighting condition, um, a first battle cycle, I can decide where to put that if I'm the operational player. Um, if, if I decide to take that option, and let's say I want to do day AM, and I put start it there, I'm done with any options for later in the whole battle cycle sequence. So I can no longer have any influence on where the lighting is. And I think that's important because if I haven't used this option at the very beginning, it simply is rolled randomly. In this case, I rolled a five. And you can see it goes into the dusk, or I'm sorry, the day PM. So it's there. Okay. For the first battle cycle, it's day PM. Great. Um, easy to find other task forces. Um, no problem sending out air missions because there's not going to be any uh, difficulty landing, etc. Okay, great. So I did random the very first time. Now, as operational player, the next time we come to the lighting cycle, we've done all this once, we come back to here. Now this is where I can have an option if I haven't used it initially. And that's to move this to forward clockwise. There may be a reason that you want to move it into night. Maybe you're trying to escape. Maybe you're trying to invade and you don't want to be detected um, by the opposing player. So there, there's a lot of strategy with the lighting uh, condition table. Um, you only get to do it once and I think choosing when when that's going to happen is, is can be pretty important. So you, let's say it was here and I decided eh, I'm not going to use my option yet. So it's in the next lighting cycle. I just move it forward one, and that's all that happens. If I if I don't use any option to jump to, um, it just goes to the very next box. <clears throat> Let's say we're there, and I've used my option up, or I choose not to use the option. It still moves into the next box. That's the only time you will roll besides the initial phase. It's the only time you're gonna roll on here. Some people were actually rolling every time on this um, 
lighting condition table. Well, as you can see here, if you do that, more than likely you're going to get day PM, which uh, doesn't happen in real life very often. So it, you wouldn't, it, it'd be like you're constantly great lighting the entire um, game that you're playing. Um, so the only time you roll is if it slides in to that next box. This is an obvious place for saving your, let's say I'm a player who's got an advantage in air and I want to keep up the attacks going. It was just day AM. I crippled some ships or had some good attacks with air mission. I don't want to take a chance to go to night or dusk. I just use it and go directly to day PM. I mean, the chances are if you roll, yeah, it might be there, but you're going to have 30% chance not and those uh, task forces might slip away. So don't forget about the strategy using lighting condition table if you're the operational player. Okay, that's lighting. <clears throat> Advantage determination, simple. You just roll both dice and whichever is higher, um, that person gets to move first. And that could very well be, if it's tied, it goes to the operation player. But um, basically it's about 60-40. There's a, there's a good, still a good chance that the reaction player is going to move first in a battle cycle. Um, some games, some scenarios specifically say the operational player, whoever, is going to move first in the first battle cycle, but that'll be in the scenario um, special rules. Um, next one's advantage movement. You can move um, air units to another base within range. You can move combat units on land. You can load combat units onto ships. That would be considered movement. Um, you can move task forces to a um, another hex, or you can form a task force and then move out into the uh, open water. Um, that's the advantage movement. There's no combat that happens during this phase. Just, again, no combat happens here. Um, another little, con uh, little concept, you just have to, again, get used to this battle cycle because it's, it's going to dictate how things flow from, um, from battle cycle to battle cycle and, and with the whether it's advantage player or the disadvantage player. Um, so you moved units. Okay, now is the time you can do an air mission. So you can do air superiority, you can attack naval task forces that were detected, you can attack bases that are always detected. Um, and if, if you don't know exactly what's there, once you get to that hex, um, you'll find out. Um, so that's where air missions phase, but it's only advantage air. So advantage movement, then the advantage air mission. Okay, then this, important to remember, naval combat only happens after that. So if a ship, um, a task force moved in to another enemy task force's um, hex, and one of them was detected, they don't have, both have to be detected, but one of them was detected, then you're going to have a naval combat cycle. This one is, is probably skipped the most as you play through, um, unless you have detected task forces in the same hex, you're not going to do any of that. Okay, <clears throat> the next really biggie is bombardment. Notice this happens after advantage movement and before disadvantage movement. So if if I was the or operational player and I was going to go in and move in and try to bombard a hex, a base or some units that were on a, on a shore, shoreline, I would have to move the advantage and then bombard. Otherwise, I'm going to have to wait until the next battle cycle and sit around. I think that's, that's kind of... It, it, think about it, the advantage movement and disadvantage movement makes sense to describe it that way because you are at a disadvantage if you have to move 
and then wait for the next battle cycle and see what happens. You may be sitting there waiting to do the bombardment until the next cycle. Um, demolition only happens in the other two. You're not going to worry about that. Um, ground combat, that's when ground combat happens. Any amphibious assault, if you've uh, unloaded um, Marines or other infantry units into a hex to try to grab, um, say, uh, Guadalcanal or whatever. That's when the ground combat happens. Again, sequence of, of when things happen are kind of important. Um, airfield repair. This is important because if, if I've destroyed um, or interdicted an airfield, <coughs> excuse me, and during my advantage air mission, or maybe I did it during bombardment, that's possible. Um, I may not be able to take advantage of it if it's linked. And again, that, that comes into play with campaign and strategic scenario. But if it's linked, I can just take all of those hits off during the airfield repair. Um, notice that if I did the damage on this side, Say I was the disadvantaged player, and during my disadvantaged movement and air mission, etc., I destroyed, or not destroyed, but interdicted an, a base. That base would not be operational until it came around to the airfield repair here. Um, and that's, that's, again, sequences everything really study how this fits together in, in, in your specific campaign and, or um, scenario that you're doing. So air, airfields were repaired, units were rallied. If you've had ground combat or perhaps an air mission um, attacked some ground units and they were, um, they, they had to, uh, or they failed their um, morale role um, then you could rally automatically here. Um, disadvantage movement. This is same thing as the other, and this is where you can search again. Um, disadvantage air mission, same as the other one. Joint activation, deactivation. Uh, that becomes really important in um, battle scenarios on up. The deactivation in the sense that you need to have typically um, your ships deactivated in port in a friendly port in order to not lose them and in battle scenarios they pretty much just say if you're not back by the end of the the 21 day or 28 day operation but you lose those ships and i've lost ships that way because of being crippled so that that happens but it also help, happens because of poor planning um, the activation actually is pretty important in um, the other two levels of scenarios because during an operation, if you have enough command points, you can actually activate, pay for some more units, especially if you're looking at the disadvantaged side. I think sometimes that happens where um, you have a chance, you've got some extra combat or command points and you can activate, say, some air units that you didn't do right away um, and so that those then become eligible um, detection removal that's a biggie because now anything that was detected both in the contact phase and anywhere in the battle cycle they get flipped back and you're gonna have to search and find those again and then you adjust the day marker and day marker is simply this it's always going to be two days if you let's say you were here at the day marker adjustment you go forward to and you know that was kind of stupid here um just go forward to and keep an eye on this because if say you have a 21 day operation and you're somewhere around here and you are um a dozen hexes away, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You, you may just make it, and if you get stopped at all, 
you might not make it um, back in time to deactivate. So be careful. Watch your days as they progress. Two days at a time. Um, and I think that's it. The, the, the one thing I can't stress enough about Battle Cycle is understand the order. Because you can take advantage of it, even if you're on the disadvantaged side, you might get two turns in a row. You may have lost the advantage roll, and you finished up with this, and it comes to the new cycle, and you get first. So that can really swing things. Um, I like that. There's, that's just the the uh, vagaries of, of battle. So um, again, any questions or maybe something you discovered that will help other people out, um, go ahead and throw a comment up and I'll, I'll uh, certainly welcome that. Thanks.